There we go. Look at that magnificent beast. This is a thing of beauty and the all cause of the Dominion of North America. Wow. Request garrison support. Give me half a million manpower. Hey, I am Feedback Gaming and this is Hearts of Iron 4. If you didn't know already, I am British. I am proud and I am proud to recreate the empire. Hey, don't get me wrong. I've made a lot of videos about Britain. So here's another one. Single player, new game, 936, the United Kingdom. Regular, historical, you get the idea, let's go. Here we are, 1930s Britain. We get to celebrate uh, the Great Depression, diphtheria, and inequality. Or we can say something different. A change of course, you could say. At this point in the video, I'd normally say the objective of the video, but if you've read the title and looked at the thumbnail, you should already know. And if you don't know, who linked to this video? Comment below. All right, first of all, we're gonna select all of our divisions and we're gonna convert them to good old colonial garrisons. Because if there's anything Britain did well, it was colonies. Patriotic, by the way. Next up, research. We're going to do the classic trick of spamming lots of artillery and wrenches and girders and a uh, barrage. Yay. Military factories. Yeah, London. Here, here, here. All the 80s. Uh, we don't need tanks. We don't need planes. We don't need most of this. Just like that. And bathtubs. Just like that. Anti-air. Three of those. Two lines of guns and the rest into artillery. That looks pretty good. Here's the fun part. Merging all the navies. Oh, yay. And merging all the air wings. Also, yay. And off you go. Back to Yorkshire. Back to my hometown. And off we go. All right, let's exercise these boys. We need to get a little bit of XP. Change of course is complete. Let's go with organized black shirts. And do you know why we prefer the black shirts? Because they're very slimming. 150 PP, it's time for early mob. What war are we preparing for? Um, I guess the back end of the Italian Ethiopian war, maybe? Who knows? The black shirts have been organized. And we play this fun mini game where we uh, go on marches. So how does this mechanic work? Uh, every time you hold a march, there's a chance that you'll lose stability and also gain some support for fascism. You want 50% fascism, then you can hold a march on Downing Street and then convert Britain to fascism. To keep your stability up, what you can do is say, oh, I don't really like Hitler. He's not a cool guy. And press this button and we're getting a little bit more stability. Mosley, speeches against German Reich. Is that even a sentence? Mosley, speeches against German Reich. Beaks out against the German Reich? Come on, Paradox. We've also reinforced the empire, which gives us a tiny little bit of stability. And then we do the same old stuff we've done like uh, a billion times. There you go, all that. All right, King has abdicated. We've reinforced the empire. We can now urge restraint, which means it's less likely we're gonna get a violent uprising. But sadly, it does slow us down a little bit because it costs political power and it also loses some fascism. Boom, London, urge restraint. And the outcome is a march on Greater London. The neutral option. Boom, reinforce the empire. An extra 10% stability. Continue the construction stuff. And we also continue to hold anti-German speeches. Down with mustaches. Okay, so we can go for this one now. So even if it's the worst outcome, a violent march, we'll lose 20% stability, but we're at 72, so that's okay. So boom, go. And the outcome is a peaceful march. The best outcome. And now we are at 38% fascism. We are getting there. This one, maximum loss of 10%. We can handle that. Boom, next one, peaceful march. Once again, another good outcome. Yeah, we're doing well. Maximum outcome for Cornwall will be 8%. So boom, go. And the outcome is another peaceful march. Yay. All right, we have got 10 army experience now, so we can execute the next part of the plan. We are going to create a really bad division. So so create a new one and it's going to consist of a single armored car sure armored car boom done stop exercising move you guys on as to say london create a new division with the colonial militia and add a little bit of artillery onto it make it elite that looks mighty fine yeah 62 percent stability so we can pull off another one here this one's a bit risky in bristol and it is peaceful once again the east midlands very very risky this one peaceful once again we're doing incredibly well 49 percent though will we get a civil war will it happen okay i'm gonna come clean with you right now i've been lying to you we're not actually gonna march on downing street we actually do want a civil war but the more fascism we get the more of the land we get the more of the divisions we get the better the civil war situation will go and there we go we have got the civil war boom here we are so all the divisions we've got here we're gonna add those onto this boy the 17 divisions we had before we can convert those to the colonial militia Pop you guys on the front line. Off you go over there. Add on a bunch of generals. You need to attack immediately. But this division with low strength, these need to be held back for a little while to gain a little bit of strength. Just a little bit of strength. And we've lost all of our field marshals. Every single one. Okay, we'll have to promote someone. You'll do for the time being. Boom, off we go. And control B immediately. Get them on the front line. All the air wings, attach them on to our armies. Let them do their dirty work. 
And in the meantime, we're going to go for a national focus. We'll go for uh, limited rearmament, extra civvies. Okay, they move their divisions on the front line pretty quickly. At the moment, it doesn't like we can push any further forward, so we're just going to hold ground, stop where we are, and uh, hope for the best. So all we're waiting for now is these armies, these main divisions, gain enough strength so we can actually push the enemies back in key locations. At the same time, let's go for infantry expert. Gives us extra a bit of attack, and then we can start squeezing the front line and pushing further forward. Opportunity to encircle Birmingham. Going to take it. And this is practically the whole civil war, really. You're just going to make little pushes in the front line and push forward. The divisions they've got are really weak, so you'll break them, no problem. And that looks like it's it. We've already won. Staff office plan. Move forward. Go, go, go. And at the same time, everyone else can attack as well. Off you go, lads. That looks pretty swell. Really good. R limited armament is done. Now we can wait for the path of God save the king. Yay. The second or third or fourth British Civil War is over. I'm not kidding you. I actually don't know how many Civil Wars Britain has had. Comment below if you actually know. And we're back at 100% stability. Yay. And now we can enact this incredibly OP bonus. Look at this. Woof. War support, factory output, all those goodies. And it just costs you a little bit of PP. All right, next part of the plan, we need to build a bigger port here and build bigger, bigger infrastructure right about there as well. All right, going to train a few more divisions, as many divisions as our supplies will allow, probably another four or five. And at the same time, we're also going to train a bunch of horses as well. Uh, probably extra 11 will do. Yay, we saved the king. Next up, we're going to go for Appeal Imperial Loyalist. All right, our divisions, our main boys, drop them off. 25, head off to Newfoundland. Wait, no, that's wrong. That's Labrador. One or both. They're both good. All right, the Grappy Horse divisions, drop them off. And we'll send these to Africa. And after the Loyalists, you're going to go for Bring the Dominions Back into the Fold. France has declared war on me. Okay, I did not see that coming. All right, change of plan. Strike force in the English Channel. Divisions are in Canada. Bring them back. And also set a naval invasion right about there. That'll do. I didn't expect this, but let's take advantage of it. War economy. Let's get the ball rolling. In the meantime, let's go for Cylon Forward Operation Base. We basically need to work our way down here to get unite the Anglosphere. All the other ones don't matter. Alrighty then. Um, Army Offensive. And uh, off you go, boys. And there's nobody here. Ah, oh, damn it. France, I love it when you make it easy for me. And, oh, are they reacting? They are, uh, but it's it's too little too late. Whoops. Capturing Dunkirk as the British from the French. This feels very strange. Once again, another historical game. You only get historical games at Feedback Gaming, okay? Uh, boom, go. Everyone else, join the front line. Off you go. Full air control. Off you go. We might be able to yoink Paris here. Can we just, just, just grab it, guys? Just a few divisions on Paris, that'll do. And yoink. So, in a roundabout way, France has done me a favor here, because this is what I was going to go for anyway. So, cheers, France. That was very kind of you. That saved me a job. Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah, that's right. Canada. The United States has declared war on me. <laughs> what is going on? This is not what happened in rehearsals. It is what it is. Let's, let's make the most of this bad situation. So, at this point, if the America had not declared on me, I would have declared on South Africa, and because they're in the Allies, it would have brought all the Allies in. Uh, for some reason, Australia and New Zealand has chosen to leave the Allies. Hmm. Regardless, we're going to declare on Canada now, and we've got a severely weakened USA, so this is our opportunity to strike. More divisions. All right, new army. Drop those boys off. New army. Also go to Labrador. It's creating me three armies here, and they've all got the same color. Jeez. That randomization for the win. All right, we have arrived. Stamp office plan and declare war. Off you go. 1937. The United States has joined the Allies. Historical game. All right, supply problems here. Two problems here could be lack of infrastructure, lack of port. Also, USA likes to convoy raid the Atlantic. So, in this case, break off a few destroyers and then uh, escort those three zones. That should be enough. Um, meanwhile, in India, wow. And this time, it might be a good idea to try and aim towards 7-2s as well with reconnaissance. Off you go. Whoa, ho, ho, lads. Looks like we're about to have a tea party. To celebrate the conquest of Boston, we now dump Coca-Cola into the harbor. All right, to keep the momentum going, keep the push, army regrouping is useful. And why not also go for it for the field marshal too? Lots of recovery. New York, New York is conquered by the British. A few of you guys are going to try and recreate this. Be warned, there's a bit of randomness that happens with this, so it might not get the same run. But one thing you want to make sure of is before America declares war on you, You've completed Unite the Anglosphere. You'll know when it happens, and trust me, it'll hurt you if you don't have this already. Get it. All right, next up, we're going to go for British Path 2, the F word. 
the other F word. And then we secure an alliance with, of all people, Italy. Trust me, it'll come in handy later on. You'll see. Then we have peace in India and another twist of fate. We've also got Greece declaring on Albania. I don't know why. All right, we've got an open goal right now. We're going to push forward. Just keep control being to railroad them forward to the front line and continue the push. And congratulations to uh, Greece for completely annexing Albania. Now we execute the pincer maneuver where we just walk around the back of their front lines. They will never see it coming. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Ugh. That feels so good. Once again, control B. Boom. Look, they're railroading to the front line. That means we're going to get these front lines all carved up nice and quickly. United States. Rip. Canada has outlived the United States. Who would have thought? Canada. Very important. You must puppet Canada. And then you're going to annex the rest of the United States. The complete annexation of the United States. And why not? We'll start like the Philippines as well. Why not? Done. And there we go. Canada is back to its one true color. That menacing dark red. Canada declares independence. You've got to be joking me. I guess we're going to annex Canada a uh, second time then. Just a fight on Quebec. I'll be honest with you guys. So far in this game, nothing has gone to plan. <laughs> nothing. Yay, Italy accepts the alliance. They've joined the Anglo Alliance. Oh, it's got a different name. Anglo-Italian Pax. That's pretty cool. Just in time for Italy to completely annex Greece. The revenge of Albania. Zog is pleased. Zog. Time for extensive conscription. There'll be a lot of conscription in this video. All right, declare on Canada again. Canada has joined the Axis. Nice. So deploy some divisions and see if we can get on the Maginot quick enough. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. And we do. This might be one of those situations where they join the Axis, but Germany won't actually join the war. All right, now we've got access to the entire east and west of Canada. We can just yoink those victory points. And never mind, Germany has actually chosen to join the war, which is an incredibly bad thing to do, because now they're at war with Italy and France. Ha. Huh. Okay, Mr. H with his bad decisions. Mustache bad. The fall of Canada, take two. All right, time for subs death stack big surround on germany all that chaos is happening in europe let's just take care of south africa off you go lads i expected them to join the axis but that never happened so pop it all right move the armies over to here and invasion into malaya and justify germany is sandwiched nationally south africa proclaims independence i hate this game all right justify on south africa take two Okay, it's looking like every time we declare war and puppet a nation, they're just going to rebel and we have to declare war on them again. It is what it is because we need them anyway. Soviet Union declares war on Poland. Why? I have no idea. Pakistan war with India, India war with Bangladesh, and now India versus India. It's one of those situations where maybe it was better off British and uh, South Africa chose not to join a faction. Uh, once again, I have to puppet them again. Please don't break away. More divisions, more air wings. Defend the Alps. All right, green air. Boom, off we go. Aggressive. Just plow through the west wall. And also, actually, at the same time, uh, strategic bombing and aim for forts will break the west wall from the other side. All right, boom. Second wave. Off you go. Rip. Air Force Strunk. All right, at this point, I'm actually going to stop because I'm going to pull off one of these army groups and I can use it to do a bit of shenanigans in the Far East. Yes, that's right. Malaysia broke free. Not for long. Off they go. We got them. Next up, Australia. Join the Axis. Yes, they have. Australia is down. And New Zealand. Um, landed the door. Last breath of New Zealand. There we go. Now oh, they've decided to not join the Axis. Okay. We'll pop it them and then they'll instantly break away. Go back here, go from here, and then land back here again. So if you're not aware of this, if you are at war with a major power, you have the ability to justify on a nation, get a massive discount on how long it takes to declare. So in this case, we're going to go for a war against Belgium who have been very rebellious and not joined the Allies and formed their own European Entente. Tut, tut, tut. That won't do. Belgium waffles no more. Belgium out. And we're going to completely annex them. And Luxembourg too. The Netherlands kick from faction. Justify. They've formed their own dedicated faction. Oh, hey. All right, okay. Um, so Italy have joined the Axis, then my Anglo-Italian alliance, and then the Mediterranean alliance. Uh, I've never seen this before. Okay, something new again. Uh, armies to speak. Spain and declaring war on the Mediterranean again and looks like we're at war with Italy now. Front lines going back and forth, back and forth. I don't even know where we stand now. Taking New Zealand again. Netherlands eating up instead of the Mediterranean faction and capitulated. Okay, next 
Let's take a chunk out of Spain and justify. Spain, rip, and then Portugal. Portugal has chosen not to join a faction, so we'll be completely eaten. Time to get rid of Italy now. Here, here, and here. Let's get rid. Go. I think Italy have, like, bruised themselves and beat themselves up against Germany. They've got nothing left. Or maybe they've just been pursuing African ambitions, but it's not going to help them if they lose their mainland. Rip! Italy destroyed, and all the victory points go to Germany. Okay, I don't get anything. Hopefully, the final push. And again, just take Vienna. Is that it? Yep. All right. Final blow into the Balkans. Let's end this. Okay, we've released Canada again. And now we can do the path that we always wanted to do. If you've not figured it out yet, yeah, we're going down the path for Imperial Federation. Oh, finally! I thought it wasn't going to happen. I was panicking. But here we go. The decision I wanted. The Pan-North American State Trigger Overlord. I guess that's me. Canada annexes and cores all of American states. We'll be known as Dominion of North America. And there we go. Look at that magnificent beast. This... Is a thing of beauty, and they're all cause of the Dominion of North America. Wow. Request garrison support. Give me half a million manpower. That sounds about right. We just spotted that our alliance is called the Anglo-Italian Pact, uh, but Italy doesn't even exist. It is time to hold the Imperial Conference. What's the odds this isn't go well? Very high, because everything's not gone well so far. So let's make it a perfect record. Oh boy. And here we go, the 1945 Imperial Conference. Discuss Imperial Defense. Throw all my political power at it. And trade. Yes. Economy. Yes. Discuss appeasement. And finally, discuss the Imperial Federation. Oh, please work. Please work. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, yes, success. Did it. it only took four hours, but we did it. Boom. The Imperial Federation. Unification of the, well, European British Empire of Africa, apart from Liberia. Rise of an empire. And we literally called the empire. 23 million manpower. But let's go one step beyond. Realize European unity. Not only are we unifying the Commonwealth and the British Empire, but we are unifying Europe and forming the EU. That's right, we've just formed the EU. Delete all my divisions, delete all my Air Force, delete my entire navy.